Well, there's one week left in this year and it's time to rest, right? Not on your life. There's still a lot of donors trying to decide who they'll give and it needs to be you. Stay tuned to learn what to do to be the one that gets the last gift. We're down to the last few days of 2021 and recent statistics provided by Neon One tell us that 12% of all giving comes in the last three days of the year. That makes this last week one of the most important weeks of the entire year. Now, I'm not unsympathetic to the fact that you've worked hard all year round and need to take a break and be with family and friends the week between Christmas and New Year, but I believe you need to find a way to do both. Enjoy family, but also keep an eye open for what's going on with your donors and especially keep the lines of communication wide open. There are people who want to give and you need to be there for them. I mentioned in my video, Successful Year End Strategies, that I got a call from a very large donor at 8 p.m. on New Year's Eve panicking that he couldn't get a representative from our organization on the phone to make a stock gift. If you haven't watched the video, please click on the link above. If you work in fundraising long enough, those things are going to happen to you as well. Here's a few lessons I've learned in preparation for that last week. Lesson number one. Assess the giving status of your donors, especially the critical few. If there are 20% of the people who give 80% of the dollars to your organizations, research would tell us that a large percentage of that money comes at your end and even the last week. It only makes sense that you should get a report at a minimum twice in the month of December highlighting which of your critical few has given and who has not. If you can get that weekly, that would be better. It's especially important to know the status of those who have not given yet at year end. It would be good to find out who gave last year and compare who hasn't yet given again this year. If you implemented any recommendations from my videos leading up to this week, you probably have had personal calls and visits with most of the people and know their individual status. You know who is given and who has not. If you don't know, my question is, why not? And if you had people who made their prior commitments to be fulfilled by year end, you probably sent them a reminder letter about that commitment. Hint, hint. If you don't do that, remember to do that somehow now with an email, text, or some immediate communication method. A letter won't do it now. But next year, it will be important to send a reminder mid-November. If it's profitable for you to go to the next 10 to 20% of the donor base who hasn't given, then do that now as well. But in most cases, getting the critical few will consume most of your time the last week. Lesson number two, target those who have yet to give. You'll want to separate the critical few into three categories that determine their current status. Those who have given, those who can't give or might give, and three, those who you have no idea their status. I would target first those who told you they still might give and then those who you have no idea on their status. Formulate a plan of attack knowing that you only have days left and no time to meet. Most, if not all donors, will have no desire to meet between Christmas and New Year's. So plan to make a video call, audio call, text, or email to those individuals knowing that it might be difficult to reach them between the holidays. Lesson number three. Be prepared for a quick response to funding questions. To get people's attention now, you might either reach out to them or surprisingly, they might reach out to you at this time. I've had that happen before. A donor calls and says, hey, my accountant says I need to give a little more at your end. What have you got going on that I can give to? Like a Boy Scout, you need to be prepared and be able to think quickly on your feet. In most cases, they won't be able to wait for you to get back to them. They'll want an answer now. If you can't provide a project or program, they'll find some other organization that can. You may have a year-end project you offered to everyone, but you may have a few more things in case the project didn't excite them or in some cases might not be big enough for them. I had a donor ask me once why my proposal was only a couple hundred thousand and not a million dollars. That doesn't happen a lot, but be prepared with different size proposals. Lesson number four. Keep lines of communication open. As I mentioned earlier with the donor who called me at 8 p.m. on New Year's Eve, at least he had someone's number to call. Even though I was a little surprised by the call, I was more than willing to help. And he did give a sizable gift, by the way. And I was glad he bothered to call me. 
But I learned a valuable lesson and put in place some protocols that allowed for anyone wanting to reach a live person on the last day of the year to do so. Depending on the size of your organization, that may or may not be possible to have someone on call 24-7 on that day, but you or someone on your team should be willing to respond to calls during that time. You might consider having team members take one to two to five to six hour shifts when they will be on call the last day to answer questions and that a dedicated line would be set up for last minute questions. That number would be forwarded to a staff member so they could still be home during celebrations with family and friends but be willing to answer a call should it come. That number should be placed in publications and social media in the days and weeks leading up to December 31st. Your organization might be the one, the only one, where a live person answers when a donor calls. And if you're the only one answering, guess who gets the gift? Lesson number five, be willing to drop everything if need be. There's no substitute for an organization that is proactive, ready, and prepared for any curveball, roadblock, obstacle, or wall that a donor puts up. In 37 years, I've had my share of strange requests at year end, but being able to flex and flex at a moment's notice has served me well and will serve you well. Just as being unique and different is great when competing with other nonprofits for donors' attention, standing out as the one organization the donor can reach at year end will set you apart. And in most cases, get the gift others didn't or even the gifts that were meant for others. January 1 will be here sooner than you think. You can do this. I hope you found this video helpful. And if you did, don't forget to hit the like button and add a comment below if there's something you especially liked. I'll be releasing more year-end videos between now and the end of the year. And also be prepared for my video planning for the coming 2022. So be sure to subscribe, hit that subscribe button and click the bell. To be notified when the next video is released. And remember, if you have fundraising questions, submit those on Twitter at DevFStrats and use the hashtag Jim and Java. On Instagram, you can go to at DevEffectivenessStrategies or just email me at developmenteffectivenessm at gmail.com. And as always, I wish you the best as you strive to increase your income and reach the goal of becoming fully funded. Thank you.